Welcome back to another episode of my Dream Shop build where I'm taking this old horse riding arena that came with our house and I'm turning it into my dream shop. Uh, off of the back, you can see over here, it's got an old dilapidated lean-to. It's way too short, it's falling over. There's some rotten posts. So we are going to raise it up, fix it, and make it big enough so my machines fit in. So let's take a look, come on. Here's the inside of the arena. You can see that I don't have a lot of room between my machines here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this whole roof and we're gonna raise it all the way up to where the metal is. And then I'm gonna remove this beam. Now in order to remove that beam, I need to seriously support this beam, which as you can see is a problem after 53 years old. It is rotten, so we're going to support that one up and we're going to double the size of it and put in some knee braces as well so that I can swing all my machines in here. You can see like my excavator especially is too tall to get underneath it and then this uh, roof slopes down so we want to uh, I just want it much higher. I want to be able to swing the machines in there and I want a big gap. So I'm going to, I'm going to have a, a big span. I won't have all these posts in here. So I'm going to get rid of the middle one on each side. So this one over here, is going to go away. And this one right here is going to go away and raise the roof. Here's the view with the old roof taken out, and now it's time to build us some headers. In this uh, big pile, I've got a bunch of two by tens, or I mean two by twelves, I mean. So I'm gonna grab those, and then I've got a bunch of plywood. I'm gonna cut those into strips, and then we're gonna sandwich mate them together uh, with some construction adhesive and make ourselves some beams the economical way that is the benefit of having all this lumber from the old house so how we got this arena there was also an old house on the property and here's some pictures of before and after of us tearing it down and taking the wood I also pulled out and saved the beams from the old house you can see in here. So uh, for the knee bracing and stuff, I have some 4x10s and 4x12s already. People said I was being too cheap and should just throw all of this stuff away, but who's laughing now? So I'm going to use my portable table saw, which is way too small, but my shop is an absolute disaster right now so I just grabbed this out of the truck and these are the strips that I'm going to cut and I'm going to end up with a little bit extra because a 2x12 is actually 11 and a half inches uh, so I'm, I'm cutting these to be perfectly level and this is what I'm going to sandwich between those 2x12s and uh, 4x12s to make our support headers and Gonna glue them together, use a couple shanks of nails, and make them extra strong. Th this isn't a load-bearing wall. Um, there's a there's a truss that goes all the way up and over. So, uh, but th this is a little bit overkill. But I also want it to be uh, strong and sturdy. We have heavy winds coming off the water, so uh, still want still want it to be strong. And. Uh, this is way more than enough because like I said it's not a it's not a load bearing wall huge favor to ask of you guys I know a lot of people say this but it really means a lot to my small channel take a quick second like the video subscribe to it make a comment you, you have no idea how little it takes to make a huge impact on a small channel like mine I really appreciate you guys watching thank you
now that all of our roof structure is out of the way and we've moved the lower part of the roof much higher now we can get rid of this beam in the center uh, it's, it's not really being supported by anything you'll see here in a second when we go to cut it out it barely does anything we, we wedge the chains on it for a second but it's it's barely supporting any weight at all I don't know if this is uh, what JLG had in mind when they designed this scissor lift, but uh, I'm going to use it this way. You see, I'm using it to take just a little bit of tension uh, out of there so I can, we can pull that uh, support beam out of the way. You can see that when we take it out, like it, it didn't do anything. So here we're going to measure to put in our new header. And again, pretty sweet having all the different equipment. Uh, I'm sure you could leave us some comments down below on how we could have done this more efficiently, but uh, th this is also the reason why we're opening this part of the shop up so much is because it's a real pain to get the machines in and out of here. So I, I threw the forks on the skid steer and we cut that support header and then uh, I'm going to go pick it up, throw it up on the lift itself, and then we're going to move the lift into position. S still takes a, a little bit of manpower lift it up and, and get it in there just right. But I think that this is hell of a lot easier than two people going up on a ladder. So pre pretty awesome to have this uh, scissor lift. Bought it at an auction years ago and uh, I, I use it all the time. I tell you what, it's a uh, it's pretty sweet piece of machinery to have and recommend it for everybody. Um, it, it's unbelievable how many times you, you don't realize you need a scissor lift until, until you really do. And, uh, so to, coming in handy right now, killer auction buy. I don't know, I probably had this thing like 15 years, had it forever. Next, I'm gonna throw some big lag screws into some support brackets uh, that we made ourselves. Gonna show you a quick video of how we were resourceful and making these. This is just to set it in place and be nice and level for right now. And then uh, going to throw the knee braces in next. These also uh, ha have, I don't know what the name of the brackets are, but Tico nailing those into place. Uh, if you know what kind of brackets these are, uh, leave, me, leave me a comment. I'm not a contractor, but as you can see, I, I got one with me. He knows what he's doing. hold up this beam we're gonna need some support brackets uh, we're gonna make our own and be resourceful these are four inch three eighths thick this is just an old stock of angle iron and hey you don't get rich wasting money so let's make some brackets I want one person in the comments section who has a better drill press than this bad boy. I don't even know how old this is. Look how old that is. A Milwaukee 300 RPM drill. This thing is ridiculous. No safety switches, no nothing. But it works and here we have our holes. So bracket made, let's make a couple more. We'll throw them up. Brackets, one with the knee braces or six inch lags. So we'll use my scissor lift to lift up the next one. Knock it in place, get it nice and level, and do the same thing on this side as we did on the other side. Put all our brackets in and then we'll throw in our knee braces and we'll be 
get all set. framing's done and you can see we've got a great big this is now a 20 foot gap instead of before it used to be just 10 foot in here so we've got two 20 foot gaps you see the big headers we put in and knee braces and look at my machine in here how much room there is so much room for activities I'm gonna frame the roof now. Pretty awesome, I'm pumped.